love to watch her. Watch her while she sleeps. And she is lost in dreams. I watch the rise and the fall of that delicate frame. Then I count every breath. Every sigh. In her peace, I have found mine from my station outside. Below, I guard and I protect. She has awakened and aching, lay dormant for centuries. Mm. And I had long since lost the luxury of hope as eternity stretched before me. Numb and without compassion I have drifted. Drifted alone through time. And it has been my torment. Watching history unfold before me. A mere witness, but never a participant. Just a shadow, a specter of the night. I have no place here. I have not hope to feel. I have not dared to love. Until her. Forever is an unpredictable thing. And walking through it alone has been my greatest torment. But knowing love, having hope, I see for the first time the possibility of an eternity full of joy. And she has awakened yet another emotion in me. One that no being, no matter how daunting or terrible, has ever had the power to invoke. Fear. Over the centuries I have taken many lives. But hers is not mine to take. I cannot pluck her from life. As helpless and unwitting as a rose, I cannot remove her choice, nor her will. She must desire me the way I desire her. She must let me in. She must love me. Each night, in her pleasure, I find my own. I fill her mind with dreams that echo my longing, oh, my need. She rides in her bed, as in her dreams. I caress her, her body arcs reaching out for the reality of my touch. I surround her, and in this moment she responds. She wraps around me and we are one and I am lost. Her hands grip the soft sheets beneath her as I 
bring her to the edge again and again and again and again until finally The rising current of her heated blood washes over me. Her impassioned moans give way to sighs. Her pulse raises, her heartbeat thundering in my ears. I have never known such perfection. And in this, if only for a fleeting few seconds, she breathes life into my hollow heart. Mm, oh, I wonder. Oh, oh, how I am lost. She is the one I have chosen. Centuries of searching have finally brought me to her. Every experience, every moment in this accursed and unending existence has led up to this. My purpose, her purpose, a greater purpose than any human love. When I call through the veil, and she answers when the undead and the living me she will make me feel again and she will spend eternity by my side I have chosen her but she must also choose me I fear that if I touch you, you will disappear like mist under my fingers. I have the power to bend kings to my will, and yet you leave me transfixed. Ah, yes, touch me. 
the warmth of your hands. Mmm, such a curious and wonderful feeling. Come closer. Into my embrace. Look at me. I have waited so long for you. Makusha. My pulse. I offer you an eternity of love, and you shall have my devotion and be the keeper of my heart, and I shall keep yours. It shall be a new existence. You will be able to hear and see things you've always been meant to. You will be young and vital, strong, fast, powerful, forever. And you will never be alone. Together, we will witness the unfurling of ages. Nations will rise and nations will fall. The seasons will come and go. Yet, we shall remain. Unable to be separated. Even by that. You are the light to my darkness. One is not complete without the other. Be one with me. Join me, Pastor. Goodyo. Forever. Mm. shall share the most intimate of exchanges. You will drink of me and I shall drink of you. Oh no, don't be afraid. You will quickly grow to love the taste and I will awaken you to a new world, I promise you. Stop. <laughs> you must stop. <sighs> so eager. <sighs> Your cheeks are flushed. I can hear your heart.
Your pulse. I hear it calling to me. Sleep now, my love, but not for long, for you soon shall awaken into eternity. <laughs> The night is still, so too am I. I am a silent guardian, keeping visible over the unmoving form of my beloved. She lays, enfolded in the embrace of death, for now. As the night surrenders to the day, she will sleep. Her body making its transition from temporary to eternal. As the sun sets, she will awaken and we shall be one. My senses stretch forth, searching for the first stirrings of her immortal life. The heartbeat that once filled my ears now lay silent. Her breath is still. But in this stillness there is joy. There is anticipation of a new kind of life. One that, once begun, will never again be hindered by sickness, age or death. Her life's blood clings to my lips like a kiss. Her final warmth of her mortal existence heats my cheeks, and it flows through my body as a caress. We are intertwined. Her mortality flowing through me as my immortality flows within her. My body seems to vibrate with a sensation I find difficult to express. After centuries spent in a lonely, barren wasteland, I feel as though I have entered a garden. Joy and hope have taken root in a heart that until now has only known anguish and solitude. And there they bloom unfurling through my being and soon <laughs> soon I who have witnessed the march of history am finding an ache in torment in the endless stretch of this one day when one has waited so long to find peace to finally have it within reach even a moment feels like an eternity. 
<laughs> oh my love, what an impatient boy you have awakened in me. I look upon her face, so peaceful in this slumber, so beautiful. I graze my fingers along her cheek, her skin holds a familiar chill. Oh, to have her. She is worth a thousand years of waiting. It won't be long now, my love. And it will suit you, this life you have chosen. You will know speed and strength and not be burdened by any human weakness any weakness you once knew. Though, as I recall, you never allowed your fragile mortality to hinder you even in the slightest. Ah, I remember the first time I laid eyes on you. You were so full of fire. Fierce. Brave. Mm. Captivating. Such a delicate thing, but forged in steel. The night was gasping its last breath, and the throes of its final surrender to the morning. I moved unseen through the city, my body pulsing with the blood of my most recent kill. My eyes missed nothing, bright and focused with the thrill of the hunt I enjoy during the night. The fingertips of dawn had already begun to claw the way over the horizon, and the wind whipped and whistled around me as I moved with a speed no mortal eye could follow. Never want to believe in destiny. I don't know why her cry made me halt my hurried procession. The morning sun had just begun to burn away at the evening's mist. But the cobblestone alleyway where I found myself was still clinging to the darkness of the night. Then, a flash of light caught my eye. A small blade clasped in the petite grip of an equally petite woman. She held a knife aloft. Her eyes trained fiercely on the two menacing figures before her. It was clear they meant her harm. And, while it was no concern of mine, I was intrigued. Women of the time, while not without their strengths, were quite delicate of constitution when it came to danger, to violence. And yet this one showed no fear in the face of what could likely be her end. The men loomed over her so focused on their prey that they did not see me step from the shadows. The fading cloak of night clung to me as I attacked. The sound of cracking bones and tearing flesh echoing off the walls of the surrounding buildings as I dispatched them easily and without mercy. The last hint of moonlight glittered off the blood as it dripped thickly from my lips. And as the chaos gave away to silence, I cast a glance towards the open mouth of the alley, expecting to see the woman to have long since fled such a ghastly scene. And yet, there she was. Her body flattened against the wall, her hands locked in a vice-like grip around her blade ready to lash out with it, should the occasion require. I beheld her, amused. I did not wipe her attacker's blood from my mouth, nor sheathe my fangs. I was every inch the monster when our eyes met. And <laughs> ah, she held my gaze entirely afraid, 
but standing our ground. Such a fierce creature. How could I resist her? The next time our paths crossed, there was a decided shift in the dynamic of power. As it would appear, my colourful displays of murder and mischief among the criminal circuit had not gone unnoticed. And I had underestimated the ferocity in which humans will go to seek revenge. One night, as dawn approached, I was beset upon by a mob of thugs and thieves seeking to avenge their brethren that I had dispatched in the alleyway. <laughs> oh, but they were armed. Pitchforks and broomsticks had been sharpened into spears, holy water, crosses, and every other weapon the fairy tales had suggested one might use to kill a monster, found an eager hand to wield it. I was not afraid. I knew the dawn was approaching, and with its arrival, my power would be diminished. But I was arrogant. So I fought them. And they fought back. <laughs> Admirably, I must admit. Raining blows on me and piercing my flesh with wooden stakes. The night air was filled with their enraged cries that eventually gave way to anguished screams as I tore them apart. The streets ran red with blood at night. Most of it theirs. Bodies littered the ground. I emerged victorious, but was gravely wounded. Their stakes had missed my heart, but their savage beating had left me bloodied and weak. Their attacks would not kill me. However, in my bloodlust, I had not noticed the morning sun making its ascent on the horizon. What a fool. How laughable my end was to come, not by the wounds of battle, but by my own hubris. <laughs> I stumbled through the back roads, seeking shelter from the scorching light of day. My strength drained for me in the blood flow that followed as I made my way into a familiar alleyway. I was spent. I slumped to the ground, waiting for the daylight to hunt down the corner where I was hidden and rip away my cursed existence. But then, she appeared, standing in a doorway like an angel of mercy. Once again, our eyes met, and once again she held my gaze. There I lay, covered in blood, and there she stood, prim and perfect, not a hair out of place. She knew what I was, and yet she did not pause at the sight of me, but rather leaned down to help me rise to my feet. I was astonished. Harboring a monster would certainly mean her head if we were discovered. And yet, that did not stop her from propping my staggering form against the door and draping me across her shoulders, dragging me with great difficulty into the shop she owned. It took us ages. My weight was almost more than she could bear, and I hadn't the strength to help her. The door swung close behind us. She locked it and drew the curtains as we collapsed in a heap on the floor. She was an apothecary, and while her concoctions did almost nothing to heal my wounds, her kind ministrations did bring a small measure of relief. We passed the daylight hours in the comfortable darkness of her shop. I, licking my wounds in the shadows, and she, 
asking questions. She was bright, witty, a lover of knowledge. Her curiosity was limitless. As the hours wore on, we spoke of the monster I was and what my appetite required. And she only hesitated for a moment before extending her delicate wrist to my lips. A life for a life, she had said. Had I not been so weak, I would have laughed. The girl had more courage than a hundred men. When the sun faded from the twilight sky, I found myself lingering in her presence. In all of my centuries, I had consumed an ocean of blood. Some came by force some by seduction, but never in all of my years had it been provided as a gift. And despite my ravenous hunger, I sipped it gingerly from her. The gesture, stirring emotions my hollow heart had long since forgotten. My love. Sounds fade and focus only on my boy, on my boy, on my boy. Tarash number forty, my beloved, Machri. Open your eyes, I am here. You are not alone. You have returned to me, oh, my love. I know, I know it's overwhelming. As immortals, we feel everything more keenly. Each sensation more deeply. <laughs> Sensations and emotions. Oh, my cream. <laughs> Tears. <laughs> ah. Macro. I have not shed a tear in centuries. Have you changed my heart so much already? I feel as though my love for you will drown me. In your humanity, you took my breath away. As an immortal, I can scarcely look upon you. For the fear, my heart might burst out from my chest in joy. You overwhelm me, my treasure. Void, welcome to a new world. 
dance is the beginning of our life together. A new life. But first, first you must drink. I want the first blood that sustains you to be from me. The gift you once offered yourself. Hmm. On the floor of your shop. Do you remember? Of course you do. Drink. to share with you. Oh, I will tell you everything. Gokrat. Everything I know. We shall see the world in all of its splendor. Oh, Makusha. Yeah. This is only the beginning. The beginning.